I'm going to show you how to replace the brakes on a BMW 3 Series E90 body style. I'm going to go over the entire procedure including tightening torques and specs. Now I'm not doing the rear brake so I have the e-brake pulled up to secure the vehicle from rolling. Find your lift points which are on the front left and right, right about here. And I like to lift up both sides of the vehicle so that you can actually turn the wheels while you're doing the work. So let's just lift this side up real quick. And remember to put a jack stand for safety. Same procedure on the opposite side. Want the vehicle lifted up so it's about even. Remember to put a jack stand underneath. Here's some notes for you before we start. For E90 front brakes, the rotor hold down screw, that's for the rotor itself to the hub, is 16 newton meters. The brake anchor plate to swivel bearing, that's the caliper bracket to the swivel bearing, is 110 newton meters. Uh, the guide screw hexagons, that's uh, the sliders for the caliper itself. 35 newton meters and the wheel lugs themselves are 120 newton meters. Now the reason why I'm doing pads and rotors on this particular vehicle is not that he's due for brakes because they're worn. He's getting a vibration when braking in the steering wheel. So the rotors are actually uh, warped or out of round which is causing an, a vibration in the steering wheel and uh, unfortunately he did have his brakes done at uh, an aftermarket place um, and uh, non BMW parts were installed and he had this problem after that was done um, just so you know there is a note in here this is good to, to go by for these pads you want to avoid it says violent braking for the first 125 miles you really should Try to brake as easy as possible for the first 125 miles um, and that way it helps the pads bed in and you don't get any metallic spots that might build up from uh, a not bedded in pad which can cause some irregular wear in the rotor, brake squeaks and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and start with just prepping my pads before I start working on the car. I am using BMW brake paste part number 8312 Two nine six one eight seven, and I have a small brush. I mean, you can use your finger if you want to. This is called an acid brush, and I want to apply the brake paste around the area where the caliper piston is going to sit, and on both sides of the pads. This is going to help dampen any kind of uh, oscillation vibration, which is basically a fancy way of saying a noise. So this helps to prevent that brake squeak. Although with the weather in uh, our area, we've had a lot of salt on the road and things like that, so brake squeaks are pretty common right now. You can almost not avoid it until you start driving and help having the rotors kind of self-clean a bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this paste on around the backing plate area of the pad. You don't want to get in any of this on the friction surface and also put it on all of the edges just a light coating on the edges of the pad of all the pads just like this so just go ahead and paint this on I suppose you could use a little paintbrush if you had one it's a good way to get a nice thin film on all those corners and uh, usually you have plenty with just one of these for uh, one axle so if you're doing each axle it's a good idea to have two if you skimped a little bit you could probably get away with just one but okay a little bit more here try to do a little bit of prep work ahead of time 
That way it should speed things up when it's installation time. Okay, so that's all done. Ready to move on. You know, I purchased this Milwaukee um, electric impact gun, uh, M18 uh, Red Lithium XC 4.0 and this thing is absolutely amazing so, so you got to watch out that you don't want to over torque things with it but I mean it tears lugs off like nothing as long as you're not on level one let's try level two that was pretty funny <laughs> tears it off like nothing click 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 you know level one would be for installation and then you can torque it down so it doesn't actually cause a problem. All right, so let's see, my wheel's stuck. What am I gonna do? Well, what's nice is I can actually turn the wheel. Sometimes when you turn it like that, you can actually pop it free. I'm going to use a big hammer. I'm gonna just hit the rubber portion of the rim of the tire. Usually it'll break right, break free for you, and you can just go ahead and move that out of the way. Excellent. You know, I think it was a Meineke that did the work on this car. Look at this spring. It's pushed back, and it doesn't look right at all. I don't think it's fully seated. Shouldn't be able to do this. And we need to get the spring off anyways, but. I don't know, it just seems like it doesn't have very, either the tension's failed or that doesn't seem like it's locked in right. You know, what's nice with having the wheel off too is you can turn everything so we can line things up a little bit easier. You know, usually you can pull the spring off by kind of levering right here, but that came off real, real easy. So now we're going to loosen up the bolt right here, the screw right here which is a hex head. I'm just going to put a screwdriver in between the caliper and the caliper bracket. That's going to hold it in place when I break this free. Let's see how well this snap-on gun does. Beautiful. Snap-on ratchet. I almost thought about getting a Mako one, but on the snap-on um, you can break things free with it. And uh, the Mako one it's not really made to do that. I feel like I'm making a promotional video, but that wasn't my intention. But so you know, this is uh, the Snap-on 3 Ace uh, Lithium Ion. Uh, the model number is CTB8172, unless that's the battery. Actually, that might be the battery. Let's see. Model CTR761A, 3 Ace 10 millimeter ratchet. And this thing's amazing one of the best things I could have bought recently. For this screw right here I did take a little bit of uh, copper based anti-seize and just put it on there. Um, you can replace this. You don't really have to but uh, in the repair instructions it actually does say to replace this bolt in case you want to go by the book. Exactly. Alright, let's turn this. And if you can see in there you can actually take a screwdriver and lever it towards yourself like this and I'm actually compressing the piston so now I actually have a gap here and I can actually since I'm not going to be reusing these pads use that pad to push that piston back right here so I don't even have to use a, a pist piston uh, tool to push that back in or a large pair of pliers I'm almost ready to go Interesting. Get the sensor out of my way, just wiggle that right there. And just put that out of my way for now. Okay, we have a little cap right here. So just use a screwdriver or even your fingers sometimes. Pop these little covers off. So the plastic caps. And one on the bottom here as well. Take those two off. That's going to give you access to the guide screws. Okay, so I'm going to loosen up these guide screws now. 
I got the wrong adapter on that. These are our seven millimeter hex. Slide that back. Okay, now we should be able to take the caliper off with those guide screws pulled back. I'm going to rest this right on top here so nothing's hanging. Yeah. Here's my pad material. Which, I mean, there's plenty of life left, but... Either there's that spring or... It's probably quality of product, too. Oh, well, look at this, too. Well, there's a mark there. That's probably from my screwdriver when I pried on it to push the piston back. So, all right, we'll get rid of those garbage non-approved parts and take this caliper bracket off next. Gun to take off the brackets. This is going to be a 16 millimeter See if I have enough room. Uh, I don't on the top. Do on the bottom though. Oh yeah, that was beautiful. Let's see if I can come up with something for the top. You know, I could probably get it if I would have a flex socket, but I don't. So top one, I'm gonna have to do old-fashioned way. Man, that's tight. Jeez, they over tighten that. Wow. Let's take this caliper bracket off. You know, they didn't lube anything. There's nothing on this caliper bracket. So, not all brake jobs are created equal. And you're better off doing it right once and using good parts and paying again. I think uh, this, the owner of this vehicle called back and said, you know, he was told, hey, yeah, your pads are free, but the rotors are not. So even though they just put them on, there's no warranty, it's going to cost them about $400 again for a brake job. So pretty crazy. You know, also because he had a problem with uh, his rotors warping, you want to check your sliders here and make sure they don't have like a worn mark, which this one has a little bit of an indent. So I'm going to take a file and just smooth this out. and make these uh, indents go away. That way the pad can slide correctly. You know, if you have a, a cookie, you might be able to do this a lot faster. I don't have one with me here at home, so I'm just going to do this real quick. So this is a good thing to check. If you have a nice flat file, you can clean these up. Check for any kind of an indent and just go ahead and clean that up a little bit right where that pad slides. Alright, clean those up a bit. Now, if you have a repeat concern, actually I've had to replace these caliper brackets because this indent here can make the pad actually stick, which keeps pressure on the brake rotor while you're driving and actually over a period of time makes the rotor warp. So, these are usually on back order from my experience when I've needed them. Okay, taking the rotor off, I'm gonna use a big hammer, hit the back side. Pull that right off. I'm gonna use a brush and clean up the hub here. Make sure it's nice and clean. BMW rotors come with a special coating on them that you don't take off. You can leave that right on. 
they come non-lubricated, so they're not going to be all oily like you get from like an AutoZone. right so I didn't want to force it I should go on screw on nice and smooth like that all right okay this is the rotor hold down screw let's see if I can torque this to 16 without having to uh, hold everything with a screwdriver in the caliper bracket so this is 16 Newton meters which isn't really that much Right there. Now BMW does show to lubricate the caliper bracket as well. So all of these contact points, which you know I've lubricated the pad basically in those locations already, but you're supposed to put a, pin, a thin coat on all of these uh, locations that the pad slides and rests. can also put a thin coat around the piston just on the piston you can't get it on the boot though so it's almost better you know if you want to take your finger put a little bit on there only on the piston if you get on the boot it can make the boot swell so almost better just to leave it on the pad okay these hold down bolts go on dry Find the right spot to line it up. Once everything's lined up, snug these down by hand. And then the torque spec is 110 Newton meters. If my memory serves me. Alright, I have my torque wrench set to 110. Okay, those two are 110 newton meters. Okay, we can place the pad right here and then clip the other one onto the caliper piston, like so. And then slide that on into place. It's a good idea to take the sliders and clean them up with a little bit of Scotch Brite. This one had a lot of um, sticky like road debris on it. You want them to be nice and clean. Uh, according to BMW's repair instructions they say don't lubricate them. In some cases you can but I'm going to stick with repair instructions and just scotch braid them up, clean them up and slide them in. You always want to start these by hand and make sure that they're caught in the threads correctly. If not, you can cross thread it and have a bigger problem or you'll have to replace the caliper bracket. camera a bit. All right, I had to get my head in there to line that up correctly. That set. You can gently bottom them out. If you have a nice quick way to do that. And 
let's torque these down. All right, these are set to 35 Newton meters, which really isn't that much. Okay. Okay, don't forget the caps for the back so that you don't get road debris in those sliders. And we have that spring clip. Let's see if it sits better. As you can see, it needs to catch here and here on the bottom. And then it needs to get pushed back under tension into those other two uh, notches right there, the other two holes. I'm kind of confused why it was a little messed up when they did it. There we go. Oops. She's tight. Bit of a challenge sometimes. The screwdriver might help if I line this up just right. Spring tension's got plenty of tension on it. That's good. Line this up right. She's fighting me. Here and here. I wonder they had trouble with the spring. Let's see. Hmm. All right, I got it and took it off again so you can see see me do it. If you go at a slight angle, I found this a little bit easier. This angle here, make sure your springs are on the top and bottom. Give it a push, it goes right on. And then when it's on, make sure you give it some taps to make sure that it's fully seated in place. Now for the sensor, it runs over the top here right in front of the swivel bearing, goes onto this clip, up this way, down, over to this cover. And there's two plastic tabs underneath that lifts up. You see all the nice road mess in there. The other one's the wheel speed sensor. So I'm gonna pop that off there. You can see it actually goes to a holder back here. So I'm going to pop that off the holder, and this is my routing here, and then down, this loops around over the top. So one way you can do it so you don't get it wrong is just start at the sensor, there's a push tab, unplug it, plug your new one in, and you could actually just go ahead and start installing it. There's a little locator there, which makes that look like it's too big. I guess it's about the same length. Oh, this one doesn't have a plug there. Alright, that one goes there, then up to the hole down. Then it goes to the other hold down location, which is right here. So you can just loop that over, move that one out of the way, and push that into place at the grommet. And then there's a plastic retainer back here, which I showed you before. You just pop everything off and 
put it back on on that plastic clip. You see my old sensor is basically off already. And then this, they had it folded over this way. Which then plugs in. Just push carefully and wiggle it a little bit until it snaps into place. There we go. And then take the other part of the wire and put it over the bleach screw cap to hold that down. Okay, you just want to make sure it can't contact the wheel anywhere. And make sure you have that bleach screw down, that cap on, because that's going to hold it in place right there. Alright, so now it's time to install the wheel. Always remember to start all of these by hand. That's how you avoid cross-threading them. So, this side is done. I'm going to do the other side and then lower the vehicle down. And we'll finalize the torque. The other side's the same, just easier because you don't have to deal with the sensor. So you can follow along. On this one, and to copy it, I want to switch to slow. torque those down after so I can do the other side easier. Here's a good example of why you don't zip lugs on. This is that other Meineke shop that uh, did the repair on this gentleman's car and when I took this lug off you can see I'm actually working over here now on this side and I was going to do a full video on it because it's the same as the other side but uh, taking one off this one didn't want to come off they cross-threaded it, and they probably zipped them all on with a gun and damaged the threads. You've got mail. So now this needs to be repaired. Or if you can't repair it, you have to replace the hub and wheel bearing assembly. So never zip them in with your gun. Always start them by hand. So I've already torqued this down because I was just on go mode. Uh, but so you know you do want to torque these down to 120 Newton meters and you want to do it at a cross pattern and it's always good to torque them once and then torque them a second time after the initial to make sure everything's seated properly and that's it pretty simple if you do it right and uh, unfortunately with uh, that other shop cross threading that that bolt is going to need to be repaired hopefully it can just be tapped and uh, it'll be good to go tapped with a new lug thanks for watching I hope this video helped and please remember uh, likes are appreciated and uh, if you haven't yet subscribed Subscribe to my channel to be notified uh, when I have new videos. Just going to go over how to reset the service for brake pads after replacement. Now this vehicle doesn't need the reset, but I can still show you the steps. The left instrument cluster button, you press and hold that until the services are displayed. Then you need to use the toggle button to toggle through the services, which this is front brakes, rear brakes, oil change, vehicle check, brake fluid. So front brakes, you would press and hold the BC button and reset would come up and then you would have to press and hold it again. But because it already is at 30,000, that's as high as it can go, it's not gonna let me do a reset. But So you know if you did replace your pads and rotors and you're watching this video, you'll know how to reset that service. Thanks for watching.